All right. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and uh, just kind of breeze through some of my newest pickups, and uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about why I why I bought these. Really, really simple. Some graded material, a few raw coins. And I, I can't remember for the life of me of whether or not I had talked about some of these, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of rehash a few of them. My apologies if you guys have seen these coins before. Um, but, uh, you know, I th these are coins that, um, uh, number one, I found interesting that I think has a kind of a real home in my collection. Uh, I, I think uh, it, when it comes to the price point, a lot of these had uh, kind of hit the mark uh, for the for what, what I'm trying to do uh, without getting too crazy. And, you know, and um, ultimately, maybe you guys will take a few... Uh, uh, a few things away from this video um, that you know buying budget doesn't necessarily mean that you have to settle for coins uh, but yeah let's go ahead and jump right in um, I had a few of these rolls and I, I ended up picking up two more of the 2021 Washington Crossing the Delaware sealed Bank rolls, uh, yeah, this is just going to end up going into my sealed inventory. Uh, you know, I, I like buying, you know, unique, odd stuff like this. Uh, it's kind of like a one-year shot, um, and I think that's why the, these are a little bit interesting to me. Uh, I paid $20 shipped for this roll, uh, where some of you who are on the East Coast... We'll, uh, we'll get these uh, pretty easily at face value. Uh, now, you know, it's not up to me to tell you that you should be buying these, but I think because of, uh, of what they are, you know, they've um, actually moved the date back onto the obverse. Uh, like in the old school days, you guys remember like 1998 and previous. Um, but yeah, I just find these quarters very interesting. And, um, you know, a great segue into that, I actually had... Someone who watched my pocket change marker report send me one of these. I think I had talked about this on a video a few weeks ago. Uh, but he sent me, the, the, actually the seller that's been selling these really well on eBay, sent me a, um, a an example of this coin. It's a 2021 P Washington Cross in the Delaware with the crown die chip right above Washington's head right there. As you can see, it goes into E Pluribus Unum. Um, from what I can gather, this was only released in one state so far. Uh, haven't seen any of them anywhere else. Uh, this gentleman had said, yeah, th this is where we're finding a concentration of these. And, uh, you know, he's taking advantage of the market. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to tell you the state. I promised him I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you guys can find out pretty easily if you went back into, you know, eBay completed sales for this coin. Uh, but, yeah, he's, uh, he's doing really well on it. So, uh, thank you, by the way, for, for, for this coin. You know who you are. I have a couple other uh, raw coins. I think I probably talked about these, but, you know, they're just so interesting. You know, they feature my birth year. Uh, we have a 1978 and what looks to be a Denver minted coin, well, which is kind of interesting. Um, seeing as how you don't see, you know, mint errors from the Denver mint that much but of course you know anything could happen uh, we, we, you know if you guys watch my pocket change mark report i've talked about cuds and all sorts of other things from the denver mint and um this one right here looks to be a little bit off center but when we look at the back of the coin it's perfectly centered with a little bit of weakness of where that uh um off what appears to be off center appearance to the obverse and what this is 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 a um, misaligned die so that hammer die was slightly misaligned when it struck this coin. Um, kind of cool, very interesting. It's my birth year. Yeah, I'm still somewhat of a young buck, but my body feels like it's in, it's in its 50s right now. But yeah, pretty cool coin. Um, particularly rare uh, by how, how offset the one side is. Uh, as you can see, the date is literally split in half on here and um you know the, the the good measurement of any um desirable misaligned die error is going to be how much of the coin is misaligned all right so we got that one there also picked up a really nice off center 1978p uh washington quarter this actually looks more broad struck than off center 
Um, off center broad struck, not bad. Uh, pretty nice coin right there. Lots of luster. And um, yeah, I picked this one up for nearly close to what I paid for the misaligned die, which is like that $80 mark. Um, yeah, it seems a little ambitious, but again, we are talking a little bit tougher date for something like this. And it, you know, again, it means much more to me than just, you know, an error coin. It's, um, it's my birthday, birth year. So that's why I, uh, I covet this one and uh, other coin a little bit higher on the list. You tend to pay a little bit more money for things that kind of have not so much a sentimental value to you, but more along the lines of, um, you know, that people like to collect stuff by their birth year. They like to collect stuff from the state they live in, you know, so it's things like that. Um, they, they're more, they're more of an extension of yourself. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into uh, the graded coin lot here. I got about what, nine or 10 of them. Um, and these are all coins that I've picked up throughout the summer. Uh, the first one is going to be this beautiful looking 1864 two cent piece. This is of course a much more common large motto example. Let's go ahead and blow it in here a little bit. Uh, what I like most about this is that it's got that, that wood grain appearance uh, to the obverse of the coin. You can see it's like full red on one side, but you know, you have the uh, improper alloy mix of the planchet that really shines through on this one. And you can see that also on the reverse as well. Just a really beautiful coin. This one graded out in GC, Mint State 63 Brown. Not a particularly rare nor valuable coin. I think I ended up paying about $92, $95 bucks for this one. Um, but you know, it's a really, really nice early type coin with not only eye appeal, uh, but tons of, uh, it's got tons of luster and detail that is, um, that personifies a mid-state 63 grade. So if you guys are looking for like ideas of like older coins that you could buy that are mid-state without having to break the bank, this is a really good one right here. So we got that one there. Uh, we got some more early copper, this time an 1853 large cent. And this one is an AU55 brown through NGC, but uh, this coin is actually a repunch date. You can actually see the, the top curl of the three, an extra repunching there. Uh, so repunch date, have yet to attribute it. I, I don't know what the Newcomb number is on this. Uh, I'll probably end up doing some research this um, during the holidays as to what I have here. But I, I usually do a pretty good job at spotting these from a mile away. Um, I just like misplaced dates and repunch dates and all that. It's just, you know, uh, it, it kind of uh, shows the, the, the craftsmanship and the work and just the, you know, that, that these mint employees during our 19th century of coinage can screw up. All right. Uh, alongside alongside the fact that, you know, the, the mint employees do tend to punch uh, test punch in certain areas like in the denticles uh, to test out the hardness of certain areas on the coin to test out the strength of the sh uh, the punch of the numbers because the numbers in the date were all independently punched onto the working die during this time. So beautiful, very acceptable coin. I don't normally aim for like AU large sets. Uh, I kind of like the mint states 62, 63, and 64s, uh, which tend to show a lot more of the um, uh, just the overall uh, beauty of a coin that is, uh, you know, 170 years old in, in mint state condition as if it was struck yesterday. So th this is one of my lower condition coins. I had a bunch of like VF and XUs, uh, XUs, XFs, XF, extremely fine uh, large cents. Uh, but that was a long time ago. All right, so we have uh, what is the beginning of my... Um, uh, oh, excuse me. I think I have someone at the door. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, here in California, we tend to have a lot of those, uh, those solar salesmen um, that like to bother you <laughs> when you're trying to do a video. Uh, this is probably maybe like the eighth, ninth occurrence that this has happened since, uh, you know, doing pr uh, past videos. But anyways, back to uh, the lecture at hand here. Um, so uh, as a lot of you know, and I've brought this up on a number of occasions, I'm currently working on a Mint State 61 NGC 
holdered date set. Uh, I am approximately 90% of the way done. Uh, once I have it all completed, of course, I'm going to give you guys a, uh, a show on all the coins. But, um, yeah, I picked up a, a good number of them, actually. Uh, we have a um, 1934D. Uh, not quite a super tough date to find in a Mint State 61. Um, oftentimes, you will find much better graded examples, like in a PCGS holder or something like that. Uh, but this one here has a ton of luster. And normally, when you, you're out shopping for Mint State 61s, they're kind of, like, really on the fence for grade, uh, sometimes you'll encounter an example, and I might have one here, where the luster is very muted, but it'll have that original skin on there, um, you know, it, where it's it's going to appear like the coin is circulated, but it's really not. Um, it's just years of uh, oxidation on there. Uh, but this 34D is, is a beauty, uh, tons of luster, and this is kind of like the general overall uh, look uh, that I'm uh, that I'm personally pursuing in this set, and um, it, oftentimes that you know you, the big reason why that it will grade out in state 61 is that I'll have like way too many bag marks, and I try and avoid pieces that have too many distracting marks. Like this one right here is just it, it's right in my wheelhouse, uh, but it's it's a beautiful coin, um, but. Ultimately, uh, the set that I'm trying to put together, I have a budget in mind, um, and there's a few there's a few coins in the series that'll stop you in your tracks. So when you're going to um, put together a set, you, you kind of have to hold yourself to a, to a certain budget to a certain grade. Um, some of you will probably say, "Well, why don't you just go for like a mint state 64 or 65 or higher set?" Well. There are a few dates in this series. Uh, the 35 right here is actually quite tough. I ended up paying like $130 for this. Uh, but there's dates like, as you guys know, 1921, which is a high relief first year coin of the peace dollar. And it's quite popular, but finding one with an actual full strike is the probably one of the toughest things that you could do. And I'm, that is one coin that is currently missing from my collection. Um, I could buy them anytime, but finding one where you actually have lots of hair detail on the 21 um, it is not next to impossible, but boy, it is tough. Uh, this 35 here um, actually means quite a bit more than, than you know, what its date or coin you know, signifies. Um, this was the year my dad was born, and God bless his soul. Coming up here in about a week, it, it'll be... Uh, 16 years since I lost them. So uh, it's only appropriate that, that I show you guys this coin. It's beautiful. I actually own a few 1935 piece dollars. Um, uh, they're more in the AU and mint state grades. Uh, it's just a very special date. Uh, this one I was able to add here, I believe in July, but just haven't talked about it until now. Uh, but it's got some really nice luster. Again, compared to the 34D, it's a little bit more muted. And um, th this is exactly what I'm talking about. So the 35 has that more original skin where the 34D, uh, you know, might have been dipped at one point. It's really hard to say. But, um, yeah, you can just tell the difference. The coin on the right kind of has that bronzy, coppery kind of overtone to it. Um, but this one's, this one's a beautiful coin. I've never had a 35 um, uh, slabbed up until now. So it's a good one there. Now, here's one that's uh, tougher than it looks. 1924S, and this one's also 61. Um, you know, it, it, people are under the belief that any early dated peace dollar saved for the 21, like 22, 23, all the way up to about 1926, those are all available in mint state condition for a, an affordable amount of money. And that just simply is not the case. Uh, you could take any one of those dates, and if you were looking for like a Denver or San Francisco minted coin uh, in mint state condition, you might actually have a little bit tougher time finding a clean example. Uh, this one is just fine for what it is. It even has a, a, a die break that goes through the rays there. Um, it's not a scratch, it's actually raised, and it's a, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I looked at it under a magnifying glass when I received this in. I think I bought this from Great Collections, but 
Um, just an overall really nice, pleasing date. The, the hair seems a little bit weak there on the center, which is, uh, again, par for the course for the series. Um, outside of like a really well-struck 1921, they, they will often have semi kind of like flat, lifeless strikes. Uh, and that's been kind of the thing that's plagued this series uh, to a little bit of obscurity. Uh, not many people really liked this particular series, but I love it because I think, number one, um, De Francisi's uh, um, Liberty figure, I think, is just stunning. Uh, and number two, it's, you know, the Roaring Twenties. So, you know, there's a lot of association with, you know, just the time period and, you know, uh, just, a, you know, it, it was just a really cool time in history to be a part of, uh, except for the Great Depression. That was kind of, kind of depressing, but, you know, uh, everybody then lived through it. Now, here, here's a much easier coin to find, 1923P. I uh, went a while without this one, and I could have picked this one up any time. Uh, now that I look at it, I might have to upgrade this one. It's got a really sizable nick there on the jawline. It's got a bunch of like hairline little doodads all over the place. Um, and a few little white kind of like milk spots uh, on there in certain areas. So it's uh, it, that could have been from the original um, rinsing that was used and implemented on the planchets. Uh, overall, I'm not nearly as in love with this, and you know, I'll buy a coin like this. It'll never leave my collection, but I will end up upgrading it to a much more eye-pleasing Mint State 61, which I've done, and, and I have no regrets. I mean, there are worse things that could end up in your collection, um, you know, without selling. So that's that one there. Uh, we do have a Mint State 64. This is an original holder, 1923. Um, 22, 23, and 24 are all plagued with like really nasty, uh, planchet nicks, uh, which are on there before the coins are struck. So sometimes, you know, the coins will show these planchet nicks on like the higher device, higher points of the devices. Um, and, uh, this one shows it a little bit too on like the hair area. Uh, over, overall, I mean, it's a really clean example you know, if I didn't show you the grade, you'd think, well, yeah, that's a really nice Mint State 62. But nope, it's 64. Coming from an era in which coins were graded a little bit more strict. And the holder is a little bit different, too. They don't quite fit together that well to the other more modern slabs I have. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this one. Uh, this is one of my favorite pickups uh, recently, 1921. It's actually a Mint State 61. So that's really cool. Uh, but as you can see, rotated dies. It's got really phenomenal error on there. When we flip this puppy over, uh, the die, reverse die is rotated by about 80 degrees. I think that's really rad. I, I definitely paid up for this one. I paid just north of 200 for this example. Um, but realistically, I mean, how often do you encounter, you know, this kind of dramatic rotated die on a piece dollar you just don't i mean these come up maybe once a year if you're lucky um and most of the time you're going to find them on details graded coins and you're going to end up still paying 150 to 200 bucks for those uh i'm just glad i was able to snipe this one uh i got this one on great collections as well um awesome one of my favorites all right, so we're gonna, uh, we have two coins left. We have this one. I just like the toning on this. Uh, older, holdered, NGC, 1887 Morgan. It's a Mint State 64. It's got toning that's not going to, you know, um, it's uh, inoffensive or unoffensive uh, type of toning. It's not kind of like dark or terminal or anything like that, but um, it's certainly pleasing to the eye. And whatever your belief is on toned coins, uh, sometimes something like this, you know, it will make you kind of forget all that. Uh, I don't actively pursue tone coins, but you know, when one comes across auction and it's just priced way too cheap, I, I'm going to try and put a few bids on it. Uh, and I ended up picking this one up for like 75 bucks or something. Uh, not only is it a, a better grade, it's in an older NGC holder, but that toning, uh, usually adds a whole bit of premium to these type of coins. 
And then the final one, which is actually one of my more recent pickups, is going to be this um, York Peppermint Patty. No, actually, it's a 1936 uh, York County Commemorative. This is one of those early silver commemoratives. Uh, they're all 90% silver for what that's worth. Um, and they're all low mintage. I think this one had a mintage of like 20,000 pieces. Um, but, you know, it's just a beautiful coin. And guess what? Look at the holder. It's an older PCGS. I think it's Generation 1.1, if I remember right. Uh, Two-piece Rattler holder. So, you guys hear that? Uh, you could shake the, the holder and then the coin will rattle inside there. And if you shake it enough, it'll actually rotate the coin around. Uh, kind of like what it is right now. That's why it's not, you know, perfectly uh, perfectly aligned in there. Uh, but, yeah, just a beautiful coin. Uh, did I mention it's also CAC certed as well? I was trying to go for, um, at the time when I bought this two weeks ago, I was going for a... Um, a gold CAC stickered, um, I believe it was a Columbia, South Carolina commemorative. Uh, didn't quite win that one. That one ended up a lot higher than, you know, what I wanted to invest in this. Uh, but this is just going to go in the collection. Uh, I have a number of uh, early commems, as you guys have seen in previous past videos. I like, uh, I like the idea of these commemoratives, and if the price is right, I will certainly pick them up. Uh, but because of the holder, because of how beautiful and original the uh, the skin is on there, um, this is a no-brainer pickup. And, uh, you know, more likely this, this is a coin that's never going to leave the collection at all. Uh, and I'm okay with that. You know, it's just going to be part of my typeset or my commemorative set. I got a long way to go, by the way, to finishing out the early commemorative set. There's a few, like, really big coins, like um, the Hawaii commemorative um spanish trail which i used to own but it was a details graded coin ended up selling that one back in 2015 but um yeah just a really nice lot of coins didn't really super break the bang nothing that's like 500 bucks or a thousand dollars um piece dollar wise that 1921 is going to be a doozy because um like, like most things that are kind of a a target or a bullseye in the marketplace Finding one online that's actually in a, in a legit seven-day auction uh, where people are bidding up to it um, that has a full strike, people are going to be targeting that. So a coin customarily that you could pick up in a Mint State 61 holder for around 300 to 350 bucks, that coin might end up ending 800 to 1,000, all right, just because of the strike. And that's how infrequently you find those type of coins. Um, I did pick up other odds and ends, you know, I picked up a few video games, if you guys are into that, uh, found a complete copy of Final Fantasy VIII for 20 bucks, uh, it's got all the CDs and discs in there, uh, you know, I like to look for deals and bargains like this out there when I'm shopping around garage sales and all that, so, we did see that, uh, we actually do have a retro video game store, I picked up a, a few of my childhood favorites, um, I gotta clean up the old NES, but we have a copy of Hydlide with some like security sticker crud on there. So if you peel off the Movie Land sticker, this used to be a previous rental. You peel that off, it's gonna leave that. So I actually peeled off the sticker, and I need to find a way to remove the uh, uh, the stuff on there. Um, this is one of my favorite childhood favorites, Bionic Commando. Uh, always a fun action type of game from Capcom. Uh, cart's in really nice shape. Don't really see anything funny on there. The The label could use a little bit of a cleaning and a polishing, but aside from that, that's pretty cool. Let me, guys sh let me show you guys one more thing. All right, so back a long time ago and uh, this this kind of plays into um my dad's birthday i actually ended up putting this together uh back in like 1998 so it's a full full uh date set for his birthday and i i remember giving this to him we were living actually in delaware uh, and that's where he's from uh, he was born and raised there uh, we ended up moving there after i graduated high school and i went to college over there and um 
you know, you're working on very limited funds. And um, I ended up putting this set together for, I think, around $60. Uh, you can't really do that again, do that with the same date this year uh, or currently. Um, but there's the 35. It's in pretty decent shape, probably like an AU55. We got the, the Walking Liberty, which leaves a lot to be desired. That looks like I pulled that out of a scrap silver um bowl uh we got a really nice 35 washington the uh, mercury dime uh buffalo nickel is a really really nice low-end mid-state and of course the uh the lincoln but yeah i gave this to him uh way back in um let me think 1998 is when i when i gave this to him um and then after he passed away 16 years ago uh, my mom actually ended up giving me all of his coins. So he had quite the collection and this was in there. And, uh, you know, yeah, I just wanted to share that because I had talked about the 35 I picked up uh, in the NGC holder. Uh, and then finally, I picked up a uh, complete copy of Super Mario Brothers 2. I know video games are kind of like in a funny place right now, but I like to pick up complete inbox games. Not so much the sealed stuff because the market is just way out in left field. Uh, but I did pick up uh, a, a really nice, wholesome copy of that, um, you know, with a really nice box. The, the manual looks brand new. The game looks to be in great shape. But those are my pickups here from the last, uh, I'd say, three, four months. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts if you guys have any, you know, particular favorites. I, I threw in video games when normally I would talk about video games on my Blue Ridge Collectibles channel. Uh, I may do that. I have a whole bunch of games I was going to talk about on there, stuff to, uh, you know, kind of cobble away and invest in, you know, for future uh, future value, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Um, you know, again, thank you for all the views and support. Could not stress that enough. Uh, Coinaholics, we are discovering together, and um, that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. Um, so, yeah, would love to hear your comments. Did, did you have a favorite of any of the coins or anything that I talked about today? Um, but most importantly, I love you guys. You guys have a wonderful rest of your afternoon, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.